Grace and mercy and peace are yours, today and forever in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. The word of our God that we consider together this day is today's gospel. And if you wish to have those verses in front of you during the sermon, they're the second reading on the right-hand page on the inside of today's worship folder. Tell me about your blessings. If someone said that to you, how would you respond? Would you list things like your family, your health, your savior, a safe place to live, your faith? What if someone responded like this? Oh, let me tell you about my blessings. I've been poor all my life having to beg for help. And most days I'm hungry too, always feeling like I just don't have quite enough. And frequently, I'm sad, crying out for help because of all the trouble I see around us in the world and because of the personal failures that weigh upon my heart. I am so blessed. Oh, sorry, I almost forgot. Lots of people don't like me very much. God has blessed me so greatly. That doesn't sound quite right, does it? Poor, hungry, weeping, persecuted. Who would consider those kinds of things to be blessings? Well, Jesus does. We hear him use the word blessed, four different times in this Bible reading to describe those very conditions. I wouldn't be surprised if there were probably at least some people who on that day that Jesus said that decided to just shake their heads and say, this makes no sense at all, and then just walked away. But for a couple thousand years, these words of Jesus have been blessing his people And so let's take a little time this morning to look at these words of Jesus together to find out more about what it means to be blessed. This part of the Bible begins with saying, Jesus went down with them and stood on a level place. Right before this, Jesus had chosen his 12 disciples, those 12 individuals who would spend the next three years with Jesus, listening to him teach and seeing all of those miracles, what a blessing that was for them. On this particular day, in addition to the disciples, we're told that there was a huge crowd of people gathered around Jesus. They had come from all over. They wanted to hear him teach. They were eager to have him cure their sicknesses and to rescue people from evil spirits. And we're told that there were so many miracles happening that if people just touched Jesus... Healing power went out from Jesus and cured their sicknesses. What a blessing for all of those people to see all of those amazing things. And yet, they needed blessings even greater than that, and so do we. And that's why Jesus looked at his disciples and spoke. And he's looking at us, too, when he says this. He begins, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. You are blessed if you are poor. And this word doesn't mean just having to do with a little less than you would like, like having to buy name brand instead of store brand. This word describes someone so poor that they have to beg to survive. So for just a minute, picture yourself on a busy sidewalk without a job or a cent to your name. And you're dressed in rags, and you're holding up a sign that says, please help. And only if someone is kind enough to give you a gift will you have some food for your next meal. Now who would think of that as a blessing, a life of extreme need, 
Who would ever choose that? Well, no one would. But that is the reality of our situation before God. Spiritually, we are that poor. None of us has a spiritual bank account where the good things that we do can all serve to add up to a certain balance so that we can buy favor from God or purchase a place in heaven someday. We don't manage to stack up works of righteousness and hold them up for God to notice. Instead, the prophet Isaiah says, all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. And in humility, we recognize that that is our situation. I, a poor, miserable sinner, is how we sometimes say it when we confess our sins to God. In humble repentance, we're asking God for mercy, for undeserved love, like a beggar hoping for a gift. And yet, we are able to ask with confidence. Because mercy is not just something that God will show us once in a while. God is merciful. And he showers forth his undeserved love and forgiveness in Christ. In Christ who spent himself poor for us. As the scripture explains, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Jesus, by living and dying for you, has purchased every blessing that God showers upon you. And so God holds back no blessings at all. Every sin forgiven. Peace declared to you an eternity where you will lack nothing, richly blessed in Christ. And Jesus wants to make sure that nothing gets in the way of us receiving this blessing. So he speaks a warning. He says, But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Again, Jesus is speaking in spiritual terms here. Those who think that they are rich without God, have nothing. Those who feel that they have all they need on their own and that God really can't give them anything of value, well, they might have a very comfortable life here. But Jesus says that will end when they take their last breath. Now, Jesus is not condemning people who have comfortable amounts of money or wealth because that would include just about every single person in America compared to the rest of the world, or many in the rest of the world. But if we find ourselves often or always wishing that we had just a little bit more, or if we are looking to money for happiness or security, or if we are willing to push God into the background while we focus on earning or saving or just enjoying it for ourselves, then we need to hear Jesus say, Woe, which is a word that warns of God's judgment that is sure to come. But don't hear just warning in those words. Hear the compassion of Jesus as he's calling us to repentance, so that in humble faith we say, God, have mercy on me. Without you, I have nothing. I am a poor, sinful being. And then recognize how richly blessed you are. Because the Holy Spirit has cleared away any kind of man-made righteousness or, or goodness and opens the heart up wide to receive the multitude of God's blessings. And you are richly blessed in Christ as he brings you into his kingdom and all of his blessings for time and eternity are yours. As Jesus makes poor sinners 
rich. He speaks his next blessing. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Spiritual hunger. Hunger to grow in God's word. Wanting to have a stronger faith. Desiring to live more as a child of God. To thank God for his saving love. That is a life of spiritual hunger. A life of of blessing, Jesus says. Now the opposite of that is someone who feels no spiritual hunger, who feels full of their own goodness, or who feels that their life is already full because they have plenty of of things and opportunities. And sometimes they feel no need to grow in God's word. Maybe even figuring that if they just go to church every once in a while, that God should be and will be satisfied with that. But we recognize that this feeling of spiritual fullness is one that could easily tempt each of us. It's easy to take the spiritual food of God's word for granted. And so we too must listen to Jesus' warning, flip side warning of this that he speaks in love when he says, Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. We can think for just a moment of that that rich man that Jesus told about who had a luxurious life and and dined on the best of food every day while outside of his house was poor Lazarus having to beg for food. That rich man ate very well here, but when he got to eternity he he was starving, forever regretting his foolishness. And so Jesus reminds us of the the blessing of being hungry to grow in God's word for more righteousness and truth and grace and salvation and forgiveness and mercy. But what if we don't feel that hunger all the time? Well, that hunger is something that God himself works in us. His gift to us. As we hear his word... Faith then grows and serves. And and a living, serving, growing faith will be hungering for more and more of God's truth and grace and wisdom and righteousness. And Jesus will meet that need. Jesus, who endured the hunger as the devil tempted him for 40 days in the desert, Jesus, who experienced extreme thirst as he hung on the cross, so greatly he desired our salvation. He will, by his grace, through his word and sacrament, satisfy spiritual hunger every day here until in heaven, God promises, we will never hunger again. The next blessing, Jesus speaks, Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. He speaks of those who are saddened over sin. Are you saddened by the increasing voices that ridicule God and those who believe in him? Are you saddened by how your own sins sometimes hurt others or are against God who loves you? As you feel that sadness over sin, Jesus says you are, you are blessed. That you can rejoice and be at peace because your Savior has removed your guilt from you forever. He's made you God's own dear child, free to live in his redeeming grace and safe in Jesus' love and power. Jesus says it is as if you can laugh, a righteous laughter, even when your greatest enemies threaten you, that you could say, Satan, you can't control me anymore because my Savior gives me strength to say no to you. That you could say, sin, you cannot condemn me anymore because my Savior has forgiven me. You can even say, death, 
you cannot claim me forever because my Savior already defeated you. Again, Jesus speaks a warning in love. He says, Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Now, there are some who laugh at God's message. Old-fashioned ways of living they scoff as they live, only to enjoy right now with no thoughts of eternity. Don't let that be you. Let your joy be found in your Savior and in his forgiving love. And he will continually comfort your sin-saddened heart so that you can laugh in delight and marvel at his salvation now and forever. Now those who know that they are blessed to be poor and hungry and sad often will face the ridicule of unbelievers. Jesus explains, blessed are you when people hate you when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. It's never any fun to be excluded, is it? Or to be hated or rejected. Who would want that? But when that happens because you speak up for Jesus, or if that happens because you live as his child, then Jesus says, You are blessed because he had to suffer for those kind of things too. And whenever you feel that kind of suffering, remember your Savior and what his suffering has already accomplished for you. By his suffering, he has forgiven you so that a reward of grace awaits you in heaven. Jesus promises, rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. That's all God's gift based on Jesus' work. That is your blessed life in Christ. So what does it mean to be blessed? Certainly, things like family and friends and health and daily life, all of those things are are blessings for which you give thanks to God. But also remember the blessings that Jesus gives you as he brings you into his kingdom where you are rich when you are poor. When you are satisfied when you are hungry. When you can laugh in joy even when you are sad over sin. Where you are richly rewarded even when you suffer for Christ. What an amazing Savior who provides those blessings in even unexpected ways. What an amazing Savior who includes you when he says, blessed are you. And what amazing truth you have to share whenever someone says, tell me about your blessings. Amen. I invite you to stand. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so that everyone can more easily see the screen for the creed, you may be seated as we declare our Christian faith together. In whom do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.